Hi guys, I'm Dave. You're going to be watching the online prosperity show. Stay tuned. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, we've got the Musculine Empowerment Coach himself, Dave. Dave, how are you doing, my friend? Good, thanks, Prosper. Thank you so much. Now, obviously, in our daily lives, we tend to forget who we are and what orientation we have become or we are meant to be. Now, that's the reason why we've brought in people like Dave, who has a passion of helping men to actually get their shit in order and handle it in the areas of their masculinity. Um, This may entail your sex life, your relationship with women, and also relationship with people that are around your work, your business, and your day-to-day life if they are of the opposite sex. Now, Dave, Thank you so much for your time today. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you got to become the empowerment coach. So so thanks, Prosper. Um, My story is one of growing up with sexual repression. So uh, I grew up with a bunch of ideas that sex was wrong. I used to have have a lot of guilt, have a lot of shame around sex, kind of like growing up religious. Um, With a bit of a religious upbringing. But for me, it was an alternative organ cult and alternative organization and um, I took on those ideas as a very young boy and it led to feeling um, like for a long time like sex was wrong and uh, I was really messed up in my sex life and around women. I was a virgin until I was almost 28 Um, you know so it was almost 30 before I actually lost my virginity Uh, and when I you know would interact with women I was attracted to I'd be really nervous I'd be really needy. I often wouldn't even have the guts to go up and interact with women I was attracted to. Um, Hell of a lot of online dating, you know, um, all that sort of stuff. So I I finally cracked this stuff and, uh, you know, with some really deep coaching and as I moved into professional coaching, I started to do a lot of shadow work, gestalt type uh, psychotherapy processes, men's work. And I went into the feelings that I'd been suppressing around this. So the fear the shame, the anger, the sadness. Um, And when I really got in touch with that, it started to release. And I uh, came to the point where I had an insight that I'd been hiding my story of sexual repression for most of my life up until that point. And I owned it. And I said to myself uh, and to the world, this is me and this is part of my story. And no longer did I, you know, pretend that um, it hadn't happened. It was, it was part of my story. Um, and when I, when I made that shift, my life changed. My romantic life changed dramatically. Uh, women started to respond a lot more positively to me because I was being really honest. I was being really vulnerable and raw, including sharing with them that I was a virgin until I was almost 28. That I had uh, for a while been really messed up around sex and women, but that I was working on it with support. So I I didn't take a victim attitude. I took a, um, an attitude of owning it and, um, and that, you know, this is part of my development and and that actually not only that, but I discovered my purpose, which was to help men who had struggled in the way that I had to, um, to learn how to relate to women in a way that women are really yearning for to learn how to make love to a woman like never before, uh, in a way that most men just simply were never taught or shown to uh, how to deeply connect and satisfy a woman emotionally, physically, spiritually. So I came to that the hard way and it was a journey of suffering. And um, I, I sort, sought out a lot of different forms of support and some of that support was helpful. Some of it was not, but ultimately I came to uh, you know, really high quality forms of support. And now I, I work in that space myself and coach men uh, in the areas of masculinity, sexuality and relationships with women. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that, um, you know, in-depth introduction to your life. And also thank you so much for, um, you know, letting us know how it all began there. Now, just really throwing it out there, Dave, um, I'm a bloke. I hang out with men. I hang out with other guys. All we ever do is high five each other and talk about, you know, who we've been with and how many 
or how it happened and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, is that all not part of how men are supposed to learn how to treat women? Because yeah. that's just how it's always been. Yeah. I love that question. Um, so I, I really resonate with that too. That was me for a long time. And I think for most of us, like all around the world, um, not just in Australia, often men grow up and the examples, the role models we have for how to be a man uh, is just as you described, the high-fiving, the talking about how many women we've been with. Or if you were like me, you don't talk at all because you haven't been with any women and you just, you're just you really shy and nervous and insecure about that, so you shut up. Um, yeah, but... Um, it's a, it's a model of masculinity of the man as uh, like the guy that is really successful and always strong and happy and, um, and doesn't have emotions, like doesn't suffer from fear or anger or sadness or shame. You know, he's always strong and confident and invulnerable, which of course is bullshit. Like, you know, male suicide is a, is a massive epidemic in Australia and around the world. Australia particularly has one of the highest suicide rates per capita for men in the world in the age bracket of between 15 and 40. Um, and so that clearly shows men have emotions and they feel things. And uh, uh, what I've found in my experience is really important is that men come together and express how they're feeling. And for, for quite some time now, the communities of men that I move in, it's pretty normal to say to you, the guy next to you, look, I'm feeling really pissed off, you know, um, you know, last night I felt really scared. My, my, my son said to me, you know, he's sick of, he's sick of uh, being at home and he wants to move out and I'm scared for him. I'm feeling fear. Now, the, the guys that I grew up with, that wasn't common to hear that. But the, the men that I associate with now in the circles of men, in, like this is just standard practice. So I, I stand now for a new model of masculinity, which at its basic level is a guy who is strong and confident but is also part of that is that he expresses his emotions to both men and women. And he knows that that's a strength, not a weakness. Absolutely. Right. So now going to the part of expressing emotions, the easiest go to thing is crying and um, growing yeah. up, I grew up around uh, a bunch of warrior type guys and, um, you know, the moment you started crying as a boy at like 12, you were actually punched and kicked to be given a reason to cry for, yeah. you know what I mean? And you can't just cry for no reason. What's your take on that, um, you know, particular uh, aspect of expressing one's emotion through tears? I think it's wonderful. So my, my partner and I just finished filming our What Women Want video series. And um, can I, one of the can last... I get a copy of, of that? Absolutely. <laughs> done. Done. It's uh, hot off the press. Um, and uh, yeah, like the last part of that video series is about relationship, being in relationship. And, the, one of the, and literally, I think it's the second last or the last video of that particular part of the series is around expressing vulnerabilities. And... Um, and my partner Helena spoke about how heart opening it is for her when a man cries and not as in, you know, just to break down for the sake of breaking down, but when he's genu genuinely expressing his emotion and tears and tears come with that, that he can, he can absolutely, you know, cry and cry as much as he needs to. And it could be uncontrollable sobbing or it might just be a tear just streaking down his cheek, whatever it is. She talked about how powerful that is and how much uh, it opens her heart. So I think guys really, um, you know, with the conditioning we're brought up with, often see crying as a weakness. Um, but I, I, I distinguish between expressing emotion like as a victim versus expressing emotion and owning it. And like you can express frustration, you can express sadness through tears, you can express fear. Um, but from a place of, uh, of owning it, and from a place of centeredness and, and let all the tears flow. And um, as opposed to being the victim and saying, you know, oh, you know, the whole world's against me and breaking down and just being an absolute mess on the floor. That's a little bit different. Um, so I, I'm, I'm a fan of as a man expressing emotion and letting everything come out without holding anything back. Uh, but from a place of, of owning it and being centered, not being a victim. And there's a, there's a difference. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that part. Now, um, if you're watching in the audience right now, 
that was your cue to, yeah, cry if you can, express <laughs> yourself. Either it's tears of joy or tears of sadness, whatever it is, just, mm. um, you know, let it come out there. No, in our day-to-day lives there, Dave, we um going to be having relationships with either women or men or whichever sex you would be uh, at this particular moment. But I'm just going to be speaking from a guy's point of view. And um, our relationships with women are, even though we think we are civilized, they still haven't evolved from the caveman uh, sort of era where women are a little bit less than what um, men should be either at work, either and um, you know, in society, everywhere you go, um, I don't think, maybe I could be wrong, I've never seen a woman with white hair who is a news anchor. You know, they're always yeah. supposed to be young, plum, everything else like that. Now, yeah. how then does this social fabric, um, you know, sort of take us away from what it actually really means to be masculine, to be masculine? I have a particular perspective on that because as you Hey, man. Sorry, I lost you there for a bit. Yeah, I, I don't know who that was. I'm pretty sure my internet's good. Um, uh, what, at what point did it cut out? Uh, okay, you were still going to answer my weird question. <laughs> is it well, clear, right. So is it around, like, sort of um, yeah, okay. putting so, women, like, so, conventionally attractive women up on a pedestal versus... Um, well, okay. Oh, yeah. So I've just noticed, uh, yeah, my internet connection isn't the one that... So my question basically is, how can we correct that part of society that puts women on a pedestal and, like, um, you know... Super attractive types. Yeah, exactly. Is, is, that, is, that, right. is, that, is that a... That's, that's perfect. Yeah, I can okay. respond to that. Right, you can start from there. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think this is a great question. And... Um, yeah, look, the fact is the majority of society does put, you know, conventionally attractive women up on a pedestal. Women who, you know, the ones who are, appear in the magazines, you know, the, the Hollywood celebrities, the models, the, the glamorous, you know, um, with all, all the curves in all the right places. You know, the, the, the women who the, the pickup artist industry rates out of 10, there's 10 out of 10. Um, so, so, and look, I mean, um, for a long time, you know, that, that drew my attention entirely. Like my goal was to learn how to seduce and, and be with women, you know, that were at that kind of top level of conventional attractiveness. And for many, for many men, it's the same. And that's, that's biological. You know, it's, it's not wrong. It's, it's wiring. But there, but there is a lot of, like in addition to the biology, there's a whole lot of social conditioning that comes with that, of putting uh, women with that level of attractiveness up as being the ultimate goal, the ultimate prize um what it took me a long time to learn and and i'm still on a journey with this is to like a mentor of mine said to me once when you go into a bar or a a certain part like a party or a festival or a retreat or a particular whatever it is don't go for the woman who has all the curves and all the looks in all the right places um instead feel for who is the woman who's got the kind of energy that's so juicy that you just want to swim in it and immerse yourself in it and go for her, go for the woman whose energy is so attractive to you that you're just blown away by it. Um, this is challenging because as men, we do have this biological conditioning. We are very visual and we do have the social conditioning of the, 
you know, super conventionally attractive woman being put up on a pedestal. And it's not wrong to feel attracted to that. Um, so most men in, in my experience, including myself, you know, are drawn by women with that level of attractiveness. But what I've found in my experience so far, um, and other, other men I speak to um, also find the same, is that it's far more fulfilling to be connected both sexually and in relationship with a woman who's got an energy that's so fucking juicy and compatible with yours that the connection is, there's a lot of polarity there. And so that you, you sexually, you can't keep your hands off each other. Relationship wise, you get on like a house on fire and you have a really great time and you just love to be with her, to be with her in her energy. Um, so I, like my experience has been that sometimes men need to go on a journey with this and go for that attractive woman, the conventionally attractive woman and seek that out um, and pursue that until they discover the emptiness of it. And that actually true fulfillment does not lie in being with that kind of, you know, the, as, as you described, the newsreader type woman or the, the models or the girls from the magazines but ultimately your fulfillment is much more um, a woman who, whose energy is compatible with yours. The physical attraction does have to be there, but she doesn't need to be a model. Um, so yes, I mean, that's important. Like let's not, let's not deny if the physical attraction is not there, that's going to create challenges, but provided that, you know, you're, you're attracted to her and there's a strong chemistry in that area, put the priority first and foremost on energy and, compatibility in your life interests and what you and what your values are um and that's a strong uh, foundation for a successful connection absolutely thank you so much for that now what is it costing uh, men out there for them not really um you know looking into their masculinity and is it costing them in terms of the relationships or the quality of the relationships what 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 exactly are they running uh, short off if they don't really pay particular attention to this um, aspect of their of their being happiness first and foremost and part of that is growth so i see men that are accepting the traditional uh, old models of masculinity um they don't seem like happy people to me and i like i go around and you know of course there are no black and whites and i'm not saying that every guy who is not you know, expressing his emotions is an unhappy man. But generally what I, what I notice a lot, like in cafes and as I go about, I see groups of guys sitting down and not connecting with each other. Like their eyes are moving around. They're sort of generally looking around and there's the occasional grunt and groan. And when the conversation pipe, pipes up, it can often be you know, pretty degrading in terms of women. It's not generally vulnerable. Um, it's not generally expressing what they're really feeling. Um, and I've been in a lot of social situations like that. It's you know, the social situations I spent a lot of time in growing up and then moved away from into circles of men and women where vulnerability was, was normal. And uh, so my experience of being in the, the first circles was that I was miserable. Um, and when I started expressing my emotions, I was, I was free and I felt connected to myself and to the people around me in a way that I never had before. And I, and I started to grow and I started to face my shadow and the parts of myself that uh, were, due to, were holding me back, that had been conditioned, that had been embedded by parental, social, school conditioning. And um, it was a really limited way of, of being. So, yeah, for me, men that are not going into the, uh, this new model of masculinity, to me, are missing out on happiness and are missing out on growth. Absolutely. I'm just going to be asking for, you know, on behalf of all the other men out there, um, what do you think of guys that wear pink? Um, if I'm a fan of wearing what you feel confident in and love, I can see you're wearing pink. <laughs> um, I, and look, I love it. Um, like I've, I've worn pink at plenty of times at different stages in my life. Um, you know, if I, I work with guys around developing their archetype. So their, their um, vision of the man that they really want to be in the world. And I, I ask them, who is that guy? 
What does he look like? What does he want to achieve? What's his purpose? What, who's his ideal partner? What does she look like? But part of him, his ideal vision of himself includes what does he wear? What does he, uh, how does he go about? What's his style? And if pink is part of his vision, fuck yeah, wear that. Um, I was just so I'm a fan of guys behalf, wearing what they're confident in. I was just asking on behalf of the people in the audience, you know. The, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> now, you, you go about, um, you know, coaching people, how to actually get their archetype and stuff like that. Obviously, this is something um, that people would probably want to brush to the side in the not to worry about basket. Can you just maybe, you know, open up uh, on how you actually go about it. What is it that is involved? Is there pens going down and you're looking at how, how big a man is to see their masculine empowerment? What is it that actually happens when you're, um, you know, um, you know, coaching, coaching this, this man? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I coach guys one-to-one as well as like in groups on retreats and, and with the retreats, some are men's only retreats and some retreat, retreats are men and women together. And my partner and I also run sessions on women's only retreats. So it's different contexts. But for the men, um, you know, which is my particular expertise, is uh, like our retreats often begin by dropping in with presence. So eye contact in silence with each man. Um, And we just gaze into each other's eyes, like pairing up man to man and just feel what it's like just to be with each other without saying anything. Not aggressive, but compassionate, warm loving and we move between each other um on on the on these retreats you know we wrestle we we meditate we do yoga we um we be vulnerable we cry we share our deepest pains and fears uh we sing we dance we celebrate we dance around the fire uh sometimes we do get naked i won't spoil any of the particular exercises but um, it doesn't go beyond nudity, but yeah, like there's, I've, I've had plenty of experiences in men's events, like ones that I run and ones I've attended that, uh, with other um, organizations where all, all the men get naked together and dance around the fire and sing and celebrate like in tribal times. And it's fucking powerful. Just letting go of the shame and saying, fuck this, you know, confronting the homophobia, you know, the inherent homophobia that we grow up with. It doesn't mean you're homosexual if you get naked and dance around the fire with men. I mean, uh, some, some of the most straight men I've seen are um, the ones who can be comfortable with being naked with other men and not feeling any inadequacy or comparison or jealousy or anything like that around penis size or anything like that. Um, so, you know, that, that's just I guess, a little taste of the kinds of experiences I, I put men through. Um, when, when I work with a guy one-to-one, it's conversational and I have a range of embodied uh, processes, NLP, craniosacral therapy, deep intensive coaching practice and a whole bunch of other modalities. You know, that, that's, a, that's different. To, but I, I mean, I bring that into the retreats, but when I, when I work with a guy one-to-one, it's over a period of time intensive, both of us together. It's, um, it's its own unique context around area of focus, usually purpose, sex and relationship with women. Absolutely. Because obviously, <clears throat> if you're going to be running a business that's profitable and enjoyable, half of the people that you're going to be working with are off the fairer sex. And so you got to know how to communicate with them. You got to know how to uh, be around them and also, you know, still uh, being human without you uh, showing out that outdated male dominance and what I say is law, um, et cetera, et cetera, which we you know leads to people not even respecting you. Now, Dave, obviously there is guys that are in the audience that are ready to chuck off their t-shirts, play around with you um, on the fire there. Is there any special dates or any special um, events you've got lined up, um, you know, that, uh, you know, people in the audience can actually uh, join? Yeah. So my next uh, four day intensive, which is the main retreat I run, it's for men and women, but it includes men's work separately and women's work separately. My partner works with the women. I work with the men. And then we come together halfway through, to have men and women together. Uh, That's the 24th to the 27th of May in Byron Bay. We're running a short version of that experience, a a weekend workshop in Melbourne, uh, the 24th to the 25th of March next year. 
Um, and I have a men's only event, a three day event in the Blue Mountains of Sydney uh, from the 28th of September until the 1st of October next year. So there's a few events I've got coming up. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that. Now, is there any sort of last words that you can, um, you know, impart on us, obviously, just to empower us so that we actually do get our shit handled in the areas of masculinity, our sex mm. lives, or our relationships with, with women? Let's do a sex. Um, this is an area that's pretty taboo. Um, and like when I talk about concepts like being multi-orgasmic, you know, guys actually having multiple orgasms, non-ejaculatory orgasm. Um, that, you know, that's a, an area that mo a lot of men can say, what's he talking about? Like, what, is, what does he really mean? You know, and if, uh, if this is an area that piques your interest, I'd encourage going to read books like Multi-Orgasmic Man by Mantak Chia, um, Urban Tantra by Barbara Karelis. But uh, just to give one tip, like in in your sex life as a man, as you're interacting with a woman sexually, slow your breathing right down. So men often get start to hyperventilate and get really excited and it leads to premature ejaculation and um, just generally not, not enjoying it as much as they could. Uh, but um, set a conscious practice just to breathe deeply and slowly through the whole experience from the beginning, including if you're dating on the date or if you're in a relationship uh, as you move towards the bedroom, just keeping, keeping mindful of your breathing, really conscious, and right through the whole experience, whether you ejaculate or not. And um, if you practice that for a time, like a, you may not experience a shift immediately on, in the first experience, although you may, but if you practice that as a conscious practice, you'll notice yourself starting to last longer and experience more sexual pleasure. Um, that's a first start. You know, there, there's a bunch of other things that come with that and that, if you're interested, you know, I, I offer those uh, programs both online and on the retreats to help men cultivate a much more fulfilling and uh, more exciting sex life in that way. Absolutely. Dave, I can't thank you enough for your love, especially, and also your expertise and your knowledge on the field of uh, masculine empowerment. And I really do hope that if you're watching in the audience right now, you would um, really, really appreciate that every single day we bring in experts like Dave that are more than willing to give us, you know, their knowledge, their time and their expertise. So you better subscribe to this channel just so that you don't miss out on valuable content like this. Dave, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Prosper. It's been awesome. Absolutely.